Hi everybody, Wamana Borneo here. Isolation vlog number six. Uh, I'm going ahead with this one, um, despite uh, being strongly advised against it from by my legal team. Um, anyway, I transcribed this transcribed this story a while back. Uh, this concerns uh, atomic rooster back in the day. Got a few drug references in it. Well, it's, it's all about drugs as it happens. And um, the Church of Mormon, Donny Osman, and I'll play a tune at the end anyway, so here we go. Houston Airport, 1971, gig done and looking forward to a few days R&R, the rest and recuperation type. Mad Vincent Crane, skinny as a rake, bandy-legged, half-man, half-mast hipsters, big buckle belt and big girl's blouse. Lank greasy hair falling down to his chest with a face fresh from Banstead Mental Hospital. Pete French, English rock star with layered hair, perfectly proportioned body, velvet star print trousers, tight short sleeve shirt, medallion and man bag way ahead of its time. And last but not least, the freaky two-headed drug consuming monster, not quite joined at the hip, but not able to separate either, Rick Parnell and yours truly, Steve Bolton. White Afghan coat singed with dirt trailing on the floor. We watched the fat-arsed American freaks who in turn stared at us thinking the same. Henry Israel, our personal shepherd for this tour, was an affable, smiling agency man who immediately realised that Rick and I may need that extra guidance to keep us from falling off the edge. Henry. OK, guys, please, let's go, let's go this way to the plane, guy. Rick, leave it. You don't need to do that. Come on, let's go. He went on to be a great dad. Rick to me, oh man, so looking forward to these few days off in LA. Why don't we start now? I've took at least two hits of window pane acid. Me, okay, cool, Rick. Why don't we just wait till we get on the plane? 30 minutes later, well on the way to being eight miles high, me, wow, look at this, look at this. I clambered over a Stetson hatted accountant into the buxom lap of his attractive American wife to gain inanely at her and ask if she had ever seen such amazing clouds. Hey, Rick, come and look at this. Rick, wow, far out, man. She's lovely. No, not that. This. Pointing out the window at the Dago sunset, lakes and mountains. I could sense that the plane was coming down, but we certainly weren't. It was at this moment that Henry decided to intervene. Guys, guys, can you please go back to your seats? We're nearly at Salt Lake City. Uh-huh. You what? Salt Lake City? Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, you remember? We're doing a gig for the Mormons here. Uh, uh, how? What? Uh, we can't. We, we don't. We don't have our equipment. It's okay, guys. They promise us there'll be equipment there for us to use. The most, the most perfect air hostess glided up to us. Perfect hair, teeth, face, body. Are you gentlemen okay? You gentlemen are not okay, are you? I was feeling very okay as the plane landed on the tarmac with a thump, gazing down the thousands of steps to get off the plane. The two-headed monster was suddenly experiencing some difficulty. Vincent had turned into that old hawk stroke crow stroke vulture type creature that he always reverted to when I was tripping. Bolton, what are you doing? He knew exactly what the two-headed monster was doing, but there was no stopping it now. At the bottom of the steps, crook up man with teeth. Hundreds and hundreds of teeth like bright white tombstones grinning at us. Henry herded us into a limo and we floated to our destination. The limo seemed to stop suddenly and we were hurled by the teeth into the middle of a two-ring circus, complete with red and white big top. The animals and clowns had arrived for the freak show. The equipment was ready and waiting for us and Vincent cawed over to some hybrid Bon Tempe organ, poking it disgustingly with his claws. Preet French, rock god, ready, went straight to the mic stand, ready to rock. Rick slumped behind Rick slumped trying to make sense of why he's suddenly sitting behind Johnny Osman's My First Drum Kit, gazing stupidly at the sticks, wondering, what the fuck are these? I was on my knees, a dribbling wreck and strobing like fuck, examining the sawdust in infinite detail while catching my nose in the strings of what I was soon to find out was an unplayable guitar. It was at this point in the proceedings Rick and I looked at each other and heard the words that we didn't want to hear. Vincent counting the first song in, a one, two, three, and we realised that after four, we'd have to do something. 
Rick shouted over to me, check this out, and threw one stick straight into the apex of the big top in complete and fabulous slow motion. We gawked as it twirled and spun in the air. It was beautiful. That's nothing, watch this. My guitar was suddenly on, on an elastic strap and I threw it high into the air as Rick and I watched it dance and spin slowly to its descent. Things now got incredibly hazy. I was leaping and diving, spinning around. I was a psychedelic trapeze artist, shining in the spotlight created by row upon row of Mormon teeth grinning down on us. Rick and I were having the time of our lives when suddenly, bang, we were led out of the ring being chastised like naughty chimps and pushed back into the limo. No teeth were on display now and we had clearly done something very wrong. But what? The two-headed monster looked at itself and said, I think that went rather well, don't you? He agreed. Years later, I did some work with Donny Osmond. And at one point, Donny said to me, he said, hey, Boltz, he said, uh, he said, did you ever work with a band called Atomic Rooster? I said, yeah. He said, ah, oh, OK, yeah, I've heard stories. Just say no, kids. <laughs> Summer day, she went away. She's gone and left me. She's gone to stay, but now she's gone. I can't worry. All the fall, even to Christmas, and my overalls. But now she's gone. I can't worry. Take care, everybody. Bye.